by Liu Cheng, took the idea down to Southampton, where he ran it for a number of years, and uh, when he returned a couple of years ago, we agreed to run it again. Uh, it's based on, the white box is based on the advertising you see, uh, well, I get the Sunday Times, so in the Sunday Times, in their magazine, you often see advertising um, through the wine club, uh, what, six bottles, 30 quid, normal price, 60 pound. Yeah. And the question that sprung to mind from somebody who's obsessed with accounting is, I wonder how many bottles they have to sell to break even? And the question then is, what are the costs? So rather than answer the question myself, I said as an exercise. So at the end of this, I will know whether I should set up a business or not. Wine Box Limited, a division of the Wine Club. This is 2005 presentation by a first class group of students. I'm not going to dwell long. This isn't a three hour lecture. This isn't an opportunity to copy everything down. If you have an iPhone, you can click the iPhone camera and I'm sure you can capture it all instantly. Sure of that, I don't care what you do. I'm not expecting to see this fed back to me at any stage, but it does map out what I thought was particularly good from one of the many presentations that I had to sit through. Um, because the wine box, the division of wine club, uh, has been set up with the aim of exploiting our 200,000 subscriber base, slightly more subscribers in the five years that have gone. Uh, we have to analyze the costs associated with the business, develop a plan for the business, assuming it will be operating just six months of the year from July to December. The idea of the remit is that we'll capitalize on the goodwill season, okay? It's not a year-long thing. Uh, I guess that might be uh, a mistake, but nevertheless, it does constrain um, the size of your organization and the cost you have to look at. Six months. Introduction, sales forecast. Costs, what costs are fixed and what costs are variable. I've asked for a CVP analysis. What I ultimately want to know is how many crates of wine have to sell to cover my fixed costs. That's what I'm essentially interested in. Also, I want some sensitivity analysis. In other words, if the price falls by a pound, you know, what impact will that have on my profit? How many more boxes do I have to sell if I'm actually facing severe price competition? 2005, there weren't that many uh, web-based wine retailers. We are talking seven years ago when I set the problem originally back in 2003. In fact, I think it goes all the way back to 2000. Um, the development of the web was much more infant. Uh, it was only just developing in some respects and therefore there wasn't much by way of online retailing. That's a marketing strategy you need to look at. Uh, probably, um, I remember in 2005 a number of students did develop websites and did demonstrate the websites during the presentation. So I'm easily overwhelmed by excitement. Sensitivity analysis. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you need to undertake profit loss account and a summary of the task is the overview of the presentation. Okay, uh, effective to, uh, it's believed that through the development of a new plan, the wine box will become profitable division of the wine club company. The effective and increasing levels of advertising, the level of sales and profits will also be improved dramatically. Uh, it's expected the division will be experiencing around about 130,000 cases of wine, 130 times six is how many bottles of wine I can't be expected to do that in my head. Uh, and we'll generate a 1.5 million pound profit for the club, so um, we're looking at a very successful uh, potential outcome. We expect our sales from our initial customer base of 100,000 pounds to be expanded. Expense on advertising will increase sales during the seasonal periods. Sales will increase as people tend to imbibe more around the Christmas season. Um, there are different target markets for this. Okay. Here's the important bits really. In the accounting context, you need a sales forecast for the six months, July to December. Uh, sales breakdown is given here, number of uh, units, that's how many boxes we're going to sell. Uh, low level of output in July, rising throughout these subsequent months. Uh, the peak period is going to be November, December, uh, when people drink most according to hospital A&E records. That's where I get my data. And revenue, that's plain declining as well. Uh, so that by December we're expecting to market two million pounds worth of product.
Demographic breakdown of drinkers of wine by age group and social class, adapted from keynote market research 2002, we're in 2005 now, giving you an uh, example of product types and um, level of demand, essentially. Um, and that's been modified for A, B, and C1 groups, which are the ones we're aiming at. Uh, and we're looking at the really marketing uh, at a group 35 to 64. That's the young middle-aged, that's what I am, young middle-aged. Okay. So we're looking at that sort of market group, uh, essentially. In this case, you do what you jolly like. Fixed costs, advertising in the Telegraph, Mail, uh, Evening Standard, leaflets, and notice no web advertising here, which is something that we ought to look at. I suspect total cost 1.1 million pounds. Uh, labor, managers, supervisors, order processors, somebody has to package the wines, dispatch the wines. You need to look at wage rates, how many operatives you need. You need to decide how much you've got to shift. How long is it going to take to shift? Some time and motion in your head at least. Uh, and then how many operatives you're going to have to need. Skills level, wage rate per hour, 485, no longer legal, I'm sure. Uh, but we can always um, get around the legal side, I'm sure. If you have to. A lot of fixed costs. Rent. Website. Oh, we've got a website now. Admin and overhead costs, advertising, labor, office equipment. You're going to have to, as, it's, as our office is within the main club office, we're going to have to trace costs particularly to our operation. Uh, so we're going to have to look at what additional costs we incur on behalf of the organization. 1.5 million. Uh, some actual research undertaken there. It's in... Um, blue water, so you have local area rents, uh, and what we would charge internally would be the equivalent of £5,000 £5 per square foot, uh, and that's what would remit to our parent company. Yeah, that would be a reasonable overhead charge, I guess, if we're inside the organisation. Utilities. All the fixed costs, some sort of rental, admin, web stuff, done all that. Design and domain rental on FreeServe. Does FreeServe exist? It doesn't anymore, doesn't it? It was taken over by Vodafone and then by Orange, and goodness knows what the domain is now. But anyway, FreeServe doesn't exist as such anymore. Cost of wine, 1.5 million bottles. We have to source this from various locations Brazil, Brazilian Real, Real uh, Australia, uh, France. You have to decide what the wine is going to cost you, what sort of volumes you have to get, what's the best price for it, etc. Shipping from these distant locations. You might not have to ship direct, you might have an agent, almost well, certainly have an agent in the UK which can actually do all this stuff for you. You need some, ideally, some real costs. Right? I'm, I'm expecting some effort here, not just sort of, uh, sort of sitting back uh, with a spliff. And making it all up, okay? <laughs> some real, uh, real thinking here, yeah. alright? Did I say something more? Yeah. Packaging and delivering costs. Packaging firm quoted at £2.50 okay. per carton, including 10% discount. Post office quotes £5 per case. Useful again to have some data that I can check, but I won't check. I'm not interested in checking every item in these things. What I'm interested in is um, effort of evidence of a good effort made. Um, and evidence of the use of some of the techniques that we've looked at. That's budgeting and CVP analysis. I think this sort of exercise lends itself very perfectly to CVP. And in fact, if you go back, I think, at last year's exam paper, there was an exam question called Wine Box, which involved uh, packaging six bottles of a variety of wines and asked a whole lot of CVP questions. These things are sort of leaked uh, in a very sort of way. Somebody was asking about duties, yes, I think you need to know what VAT and import duties are likely to be. Uh, this is real, I would, I'd like a realistic costing, I'd like a realistic assessment of the potential for success of this organisation. I don't want us to mislead the wine club and find six months down the line that we've actually not made a profit, we've actually made a loss, causing uh, the parent company considerable distress, uh, even going into administration or whatever. 
Variable costs, we worked out here at £45.27, and I can't remember what the price was. Um, that's your fixed costs, and that's your variable costs. I suspect somewhere there'll be a price. Yeah, £65 the price for the case. So we have a contribution margin of almost £20 here that's needed to cover £1.5 million worth of fixed costs. Uh, and with that sort of contribution margin, which is really rather generous, we end up with uh, some uh, data looking at profitability at different levels of uh, case sales. We turn from loss making to profit making at 80,000 cases on our current cost structure. And if we can sell 150,000 cases, which we think is probably within our capacity, then we can make over a million pounds worth of profit. And graphs, particularly in a presentation, make a point better than data does. Yeah? Uh, a table like that, you've got to stop, you've got to read it, you've got to analyze it. This, in uh, visual format, tells you rather more. It tells you that at 80,000 pounds, we'll break even. It tells you that at 130,000 units of pro uh, output, we will actually make a pro profit if you wanted to read it on the scale of 1.15 million pounds. So visually, you can get the picture. Yeah? And it's much easier presented in that sort of way. Contribution per case, around about 20 quid. Break even, 76,000 cases. We said about 80,000 on the picture there. And break even revenue, we'd have to sell a hell of a lot of profit, nearly 5 million pounds worth of profit. They never give me that. Yeah. On our projections for the next six months on hypothetical data, uh, on a hypothetical customer base. Uh, which we haven't yet access, access 4,975,000, or in fact 5 million pounds, is roughly the break even that I need to, break even revenue I need to achieve. Yeah? Certainly, 0.83 shows you didn't understand the damn thing. All right? It's that serious. Just don't put decimals in. You need the decimals at 19.73, that's fair enough. But when you're extrapolating and using it for a presentation or general argument, do not put decimals in there. TVP analysis, at this point all fixed costs have been covered, it said the break-even level is rel relatively low compared to the volume, yes, we said 78,000 units we had to sell, we think we can sell around about 130,000 cases, so break-even is around about 60% of the output, yeah, so it's not actually that low, uh, and I do have to ship quite a lot of product uh, before I actually cover my costs. Sensitivity. That looks at to what extent prices could fall, costs could rise before you have to before you only achieve break even at the planned level of output, uh, and it indicates which variables are most sensitive. Invariably, product price is the most sensitive item in any discussion, and the other sensitive item in particular is going to be your variable costs because price and variable costs make your contribution margin. They're the bits. Changes in contribution margin are going to have the biggest impact on your break-even point. It needs quite substantial changes in fixed cost to have any real impact on my profitability. That's my, well that's the dear students. Um, sensitivity analysis, £65 is the current charge. If it drops to £55, then there'll be a, a decrease. That's a decrease of 15%. I will only break even, not make a profit. Uh, margin of safety uh, is 42%. That is, if I reduce my sales, from 130 to 76, then I'll only just break even. Uh, in terms of fixed cost, there'll have to be a massive increase in fixed cost. In cost of wine, there will have to be a massive increase. Uh, duty, 57% increase. Delivery charges would have to go up by 100. This is all other things being equal. If delivery charges go up by 162%, I would then only break even, right? In practice, all of these things could be slightly different. And if you combine all of these as slight increases in cost, plainly, in a simulation, uh, you would find that you'd break even at a much lower level or a much higher level. Right, so this, you know, a 324% increase in my packaging costs to uh, £10.62 would wipe out my profit margin and I'd only just break even. In terms of total variable costs, so see, in terms of total variable cost, an increase of 18% 
will knock my contribution margin to the extent that I won't break even at uh, the current level, and an increase, then a decrease in profit of 15%. So it's the variable cost and the price which combine to make my contribution margin, which are the things that are most sensitive to changes in which we need to. Once you've done a sensitivity analysis, you ought to decide you know, which of these items is most sensitive yeah? and which can be most easily affected by competition. You have competitors out there. If you're going to enter the market, you have other people aware of you know, your, the Meerkat search machine and all the other comparison uh, websites. You can find you know, cheapest price for combinations of wines quite easily, so you have a lot of potential competition out there that he's looking at. Sensitivity analysis says it shows the team's forecasting figures have a large margin of error. In other words, we can go badly wrong and still make a profit. Limitations of sensitivity analysis, uh, absence of any formal probabilities. Each variable is changed in isolation, so we're assuming that um, all other things will remain the same, and that's improbable in any real context, and in the real world, numbers will change as I say, quite simultaneously, in all probability. Profit loss account, there's my profit projections. Cumulative profit up to £1,054,000 over the six month period. A lot of really quality detail there, okay, a, a genuine effort. No balance sheet required. Final analysis, gross profit 81%. Rent, labour, admin costs were allocated as fixed costs. Sales increased substantially in November and December due to increased advertising, and the best net profit figure achieved is 15.7% on total sales in December. Uh, and we have a profit trend line, and you have a summary. So, a lot of core research needed in terms of your costs, uh, sourcing of your product, prices of products, your VAT, your duty costs. Um, it's a new business launch we're looking at here yeah. as a subsidiary organization within uh, wine club and the reason we're doing it as a wine club is because we have a customer base already so the first aim is to hit the existing 200,000 customer base with new advertising to try and persuade them to buy these cases yeah they're obviously wine drinkers so they're the people who aim at first but then you'll also want to widen your search uh, it might be interesting to know what the demographics are within wine club yeah, who are they aiming at? Uh, particularly, uh, can we expand that remit? Not to include students at Kent.